Hello. Um, continuing on with the Christopher Nolan uh, little series that I'm doing, I am talking about, obviously, by the title of this description, by the title alone, as well as just, you know, the way this has all been going, it's very obvious that discussing The Dark Knight. The film most people seem to say is the greatest film Christopher Nolan has ever made to date. Um, and, um, sorry for a moment. But, uh, yeah, the, many people say this is his best film. Many people say, or if it isn't his best film, I say Inception or Memento or even recently Dunkirk is uh, seen to be better uh, than the Dark Knight trilogy. In terms of the Dark Knight trilogy, many say This is his best film. Apologize for that, but this I, this is the steel book and it has this. I'll just put that there. That way I don't have to keep fiddling with it. I continue to use this to show. And I, I apologize earlier for uh, looking at something else. But I don't have a whole... But, but basically with this film... There's so much that has already been said, there's not much I can actually ever, I or pretty much anybody who has never really talked about this film, there's nothing totally new one could actually say about this when talking about it positively. And I'm sure it's the same with people who have, you know, who aren't so fond of this movie, who would say negative things about it, because there are people who do that. I obviously love this trilogy, I love each film, I think the trilogy gets better. You know, one by one, uh, the series just gets better, in my opinion. So, if we're gonna say, well, like if I'm gonna say what, where I'll rank them, I think I've already said this before, but if I haven't, I will say this again. This is my second favorite film in this trilogy. Batman Begins is my favorite film, or my Batman Begins is my third favorite film, and The Dark Knight Rises is my favorite. Um, now, I've already talked about The Dark Knight Rises quite a bit, so again, perhaps I might not have much new things to say about that film either. The Dark Batman Begins, however, I went on an hour, because um, I never really talked about it a whole lot, except here and there. I might not have gone into a whole lot about the plot, in terms of in-depth about all the inner in their workings, but anybody who has seen the movie, they know what I'm talking about, even if I just give a little short description about it's basically the origin of Batman and all that. And Christopher Nolan made that movie because in the comics and even in the Tim Burton film, there's never really been sort of an account from the years between uh, Bruce Wayne at some point, coming to a crossroads of deciding he needs to do something with his life. And then it's like skipped seven or eight years later, and he's now, uh, he's in Gotham, uh, becoming Batman. Like Batman Year One, uh, he was basically gone uh, for so many years. And then he comes back, becomes Batman. Um, now, with this film, um, so many people focus on one aspect, one aspect alone. I mean, sure, they talk about the direction and everything, 
Um, but, you know, it's called The Dark Knight. It's basically a bat, it is bat, a Batman film. It's about Bruce Wayne, it's about Batman, it's about the continuation of Bruce Wayne's journey, being Batman. But most people do not at all focus on that part of the film. What everybody seems to focus on more is the Joker. And um, aside from the fact Heath Ledger gave a fantastic performance, many people also focus on it because this is the final movie he completed before he died in 2008. He died 10 years ago. This movie is 10 years old. And again, many people have talked about this movie over and over, so there's nothing much I can really say new to the table. I will attempt to try, but I may not be successful. Perhaps I'm re I will regurgitate everything that anyone has ever said about this movie positively already. Perhaps there's nothing new at this point anybody can ever say about this movie in a positive light or negative light. But again, I will try. But, yeah, many people talk about the Joker, and... Again, he gives a fantastic performance, a phenomenal one. Many people, he's the definitive Joker. Um, for others, not entirely. Um, but, you know, people acknowledge he was very good. Um, some say perhaps it's overrated, his performance, or even the film. Um, I think it is worthy of the praise. Um... But again, that's, you know, to each of their own. Um, you might agree, you might disagree. Um, but with the Joker, again, many people talk about him more often than not, aside from it being, oh, Batman and the Joker, you know, the Joker's obviously going to be mentioned quite a bit outside of Batman, but the Joker overshadowed pretty much every single person involved in this movie. The only person who might get occasional... Mentioning more than, say, like Christian Bale, who is the star and lead of this film, is Christopher Nolan, uh, because he directed it. He co-wrote and produced the film. So, you know, that, you know, it would make sense. He gets talked about a lot as well. Now, uh, again, many people talk about the Joker because Heath Ledger died. The reality is, the Joker only, he, he, his screen time is like 25 minutes or so. 30, if you count the total, if you add up pretty much every single scene he is in, but you don't see him, you might just hear him, it might add up to be about 30 minutes or so. But, but 25 or 30 minutes, that's all he has. And he does impact the movie. He is quite he is fantastic, he is amazing for being in the film as long as he is in a two and a half hour movie he seems to be in it, sound, it seems like he's in it more um, now the inspirations for this film are the long Batman the long Halloween because it has Two-Face um, you know and there's also uh story Batman or the Joker's five way revenge uh, which uh, famous uh, writers Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill reintroduced the Joker and um, those two stories combine together and um, you know they introduce in this film some new characters obviously the Joker had to come in because at the end of Batman Begins Batman's given a Joker card by Gordon. But the other new main new character that is focused on a lot is Harvey Dent. And uh, Harvey Dent, throughout the film, he's the DA. He's like Gotham's White Knight. He basically is doing what he can, essentially what Batman's doing. Get rid of the, the main big crimes, like organized crime getting rid of 
all that stuff, just doing what he can, but during the day time, while Batman is at night. And as the film goes on, um, many people, you know, Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne says, like, he thinks, like, Harvey Dent is the guy who can take over, become this, you know, this great savior that Gotham needs. And he's able to do all that without a mask, where Bruce Wayne has to wear a mask because, you know, he's a billionaire. He does have people he cares about, you know, Alfred, you know, Lucius Fox, people of his company. Um, Gordon quite possibly will be in Jeopardy, even if without knowing his identity, but because, you know, Gordon, at this point, uh, you know, he's in the film. He's still a lieutenant, but by the end, he becomes commissioner because the commissioner is then killed by the Joker, who is dispatching of certain people. Uh, and uh, the, the it's quite a plot. And in the film, uh, the Joker basically creates Harvey Dent um, because he as Herbie Dent and Rachel Dawes, who was now in a relationship with um, Harvey. Uh, she... Uh, there's sort of a love triangle with Bruce Wayne, or Harvey Dent, or Rachel Dawes and Harvey Dent. You know, both of Rachel. Rachel's... Um, you know, she's in a relationship with Harvey. While Bruce Wayne obviously has feelings for her. And she seems to very much recipro reciprocate these feelings to her, or to him. And it, it, you can say, f f lesser, f f f lack of a better word, she's essentially, she kind of strings him along. She makes him have this feeling that one day, when Batman is no longer needed and will never be needed ever again in Gotham, even if at its worst later on, which by getting rid of all the corrupt corruption in the police force and politics as much as possibly are humanly possible in Gotham City and getting rid of organized crime, whatever the worst crime could be with all that corruption and crime completely, that horrible crime gone, Batman wouldn't be needed. And, um, it's not specifically alluded to with this thing, or this little trend I'm going to mention, but in The Dark Knight, it's, well, I guess it could be kind of alluded to, but at the very end of Batman Begins, but in The Dark Knight, it does emphasize that Bruce Wayne does not want to be Batman anymore. Or, or or forever, not anymore, but, you know, forever. He doesn't want to be Batman forever, and some say oh, that's completely against Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne would never do that. He would always want to be Batman. He has to be Batman because of a promise he made to himself as a kid to stop all this. But, the, but then people also forget this is in a realistic setting. Um, in a realistic setting, in a real in as close as the real world as we could possibly be, and with Batman. If Batman was a real-life crime-fighting hero, Benjamin Lane, whatever you want to call him, you know, Bruce Wayne would eventually want to retire at some point. Want, want somebody to either succeed him, hopefully, like within a Harvey Dent situation, where, you know, uh, <clears throat> he doesn't have to be Batman anymore, and somebody with a face of fighting all these criminals and all this, uh, the law and all, that kind of thing, you know, is, it's something that a real life Bruce Wayne would want to do, but so many people can't get their minds out of this whole, it has to be completely like the comics by the very book, for sure, in a comic book, yes, Bruce Wayne would want to be Batman as long as he could until quite possibly the day he dies. 
or till he's just completely unable to beat Batman for one reason or another. Be it he's now handicapped or he's just too old and the in to where even with his resources and money he just couldn't find a way to be Batman anymore. So either he'd have to find his successor or something else. Um, but in the real world, you know, Bruce Wayne would want to retire and for him he wants to have a you know he like wants to have a be with Rachel possibly have a family um, you know I'm sure before um, his parents died if he ever thought about relationships in any way at that age or before he might have wanted to have a family but then things obviously changed dramatically when he his parents were killed and you know, that's all unfortunate obviously but it's just that's just something I want to try to illustrate because people complain about that with the Dark Knight Rises and I'm like because that takes place uh, eight years after this film but there's that one comic that that film is based off of is called um, The Dark Knight Returns where Bruce Wayne's gone for nine years because uh, some of those criticisms they do kind of I hear, hear people sort of emanate that's like it's a little problem I might have with The Dark Knight is it kind of alludes to Bruce Wayne wanting to stop being Batman when that would never happen in the comics like this is a movie. Also, there's various interpretations of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Who's to say there can't be a version like this? A realistic version where Bruce Wayne realistically knows he can never he can't be Batman forever. Otherwise he's gonna die. But yeah, he he he's yeah, the like seeds are planted in the and Batman begins that he doesn't want to be Batman forever but at some point would like to stop because crime is pretty much so low that even the worst crimes would not need Batman you know Gordon or the police if honest good cops are there as a majority could go and basically stop said crimes. Um, that's what Bruce Wayne really was hoping for, because Bruce Wayne says later in the trilogy at the end, Batman's a symbol. And he says this in uh, Batman Begins. He wants to create like a symbol that sh and put fear into those who pre prey on the fearful. And in the Dark Knight, we see copycat Batmans. This is being illustrated throughout the trilogy. Batman is a symbol. He's supposed to symbolize hope. And you don't have to be afraid of the supposed boogeymen of Gotham that prey on just anybody that seems like would be very easy to scare, intimidate, and steal from. And who knows all what could possibly go from there, but, you know, that's just um, one aspect, and, um, so, yeah, I know this was all about <laughs> kind of intertwining with Rachel, Batman, and Harvey Dent with this love triangle thing, but it does, it relate since, you know, Bruce sees Harvey Dent as the solution to Batman in that Batman doesn't need to be needed anymore in that he does, he's going to do all these, you know, he's going to be able to retire and Harvey Dent's going to be able to take over without a mask and doing things legally by the book as they should and then he and Rachel could be together and 
have a family and live happily ever after. Um, obviously things don't uh, <clears throat> turn out that way, but that's Bruce's hope. And with him, he's holding on to this hope. He doesn't want it to go. He wants it to be alive as much as possible. And he asks Rachel a couple of times in the film if she meant what she said to him of when the day no longer needs a Batman, that she would be there for him. Asked if she meant that, and she says, Go make me your only hope for a better life. He asks her that again, and you know, asks, did you, did you mean it? She says, Yes. And then they kiss, and then. And yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know. The Rachel character in this is very different from Batman Begins. I mean, obviously, she has to change. But just, I don't know. And I mentioned last time how I wasn't too f fond of Maggie Gyllenhaal as I was Katie Holmes. And again, Katie Holmes had an innocence, a naivete. You know, in this film, she can't be as naive, obviously, because a lot of things have happened. And um, you can't just be naive throw like a year or so because th this film takes place like a year after Batman Begins <clears throat> and um, you know because of that um, some people complain about that but whatever You know, she, there's just the innocence that Katie Holmes had with this character that is does not exist at all with Maggie Gyllenhaal's performance, which is why I think she's the one of the weakest parts of this film. Actually, she's the weakest. There's not like multiple things that I think are weak, but she seems a bit cold uh, quite a bit of the time, particularly when she's with Bruce Wayne alone, and it's like. This is your childhood friend. Um, and, and in Batman Begins, at the end, it's like she basically accepts him being Batman for as long as he has to be until things get better when he doesn't have to be anymore. But in this film, it's like she seems to resent him being Batman. I mean, that's not a good word, obviously. Like She just, like she doesn't like it. She doesn't like him being Batman and all this, in a way. And again, I know that might not make sense or anything. I've seen the movie, but... It's kind of hard for me to truly say why... Uh, about this part of the, her performance I don't truly like. It's kind of hard in that... I can't just pinpoint it down, if that makes sense. There's various things, and it's like... She's just cold. I mean, I guess that's the best way to put it, but, you know, people would want you to say more. And it's like, just look at the scene with Bruce Wayne. She's very cold to him. Where in Batman Begins, at the very end, she seems to be all fine and all that with him being Batman. But here, it's like, she's very cold and just like, she just has his face on quite a bit of the film. Sure, there are moments where she smiles, and then laughs, and all of that, but it's like that she just has this the same face. Like she's not impressed, and she's just like, ugh, like couldn't be bothered to possibly truly reflect on what she said. And truly, genuinely mean that she did mean what she said to him in the previous film about being there for him. Seems like she sort of 
kind of reluctantly says so, so this conversation can end. And, um, and I'm not saying she didn't mean it at all, but, I mean, it's just how she delivers sort of lines that kind of come, comes across that way. I don't know. I know some didn't like... <clears throat> Katie Holmes, I did, but whatever. Everybody has their own thoughts on that character. Um, with, you know, the Joker, I'm talking about him now, um, he wants to cause destruction. Basically, they, throughout the whole film, he just wants to prove everybody can be like him. Everybody can be dark. Everybody can be evil. Everybody can do this and that and cause panic and chaos and kill. And at the very end, Batman says, "Is like, what are we trying to prove that deep down everybody is is like you?" And he's like, "You're alone." You know. Sure, throughout the film, you see he has henchmen and all these people, but he's like, yeah, "I think these people are only with him because they're gonna be getting paid a lot." promise of money and all this and that and he does all this smart stuff but the Joker really doesn't really have aside from spreading chaos and panic and all that and just trying to prove people can be like him you know the Joker doesn't really seem to <clears throat> care a lot <laughs> it's just the Joker um they got that aspect really quite perfectly, in my opinion. Um, Nolan hit it out, hit it out of the park with the crafting with his brother David Goyer and the direction. And obviously Heath Ledger just is outstanding. Um, and and uh, again, there's I know I might be not be talking, I'm not talking a whole lot about the Joker, but it's like so many things have been said about him, there's like, what can I say? What can I possibly say that's completely new and original that has never been said before? There's literally nothing. There's like nothing at all. And, um, and I can't think of anything. You know, I tried to think of something new, and I can't. Everything has already been said. I've basically regurgitated every single... Thing that has come before within these 10 years this film has come out I said it right from the day one I saw it in the theater saying the same stuff so many people have said about the movie and we've been repeating the same stuff over and over there's nothing new at this point I believe anybody can really say it doesn't seem to be um, so I'm not really talking about it a whole lot and and I know I'm probably fumbling and stumbling around trying to say stuff about the Joker, but I'm like, there's nothing I can really say. It's all been said. And I'm trying to think of something new, and I just shouldn't, because I can't think of anything. Maybe one day I will. But until that day, I'm just not going to be saying anything. He was great. He was a great Joker. He was a, he was really good in the movie. Joker's well done. Written well, very well in this movie. Performed well in the end. Nothing more to be said until I can say anything new, or perhaps somebody who is somewhere down the line kind of says something new, which then might get me thinking, and then I say I think of something new as well, and maybe I'll make a video regarding that. But yeah, um, no, Commissioner Gordon, who becomes commissioner in this film, uh, as I said earlier. Uh, Lucius Fox and Alfred, they're all great, um, masterfully played by Academy Award winning actors, uh, you know, Gary Oldman, he's just fantastic, um, one critic actually said they thought he deserved an Oscar more than Heath Ledger, like all the praise and everything is towards Heath Ledger, but they think in terms of awards, he's more, he's just as deserving of a nomination if quite possibly, to this critic's mind, more deserved of a win than Heath Ledger. Like, basically, his performance is so subtle that, um, 
he'll just be overlooked. It's like, he's good, he's great, or whatever. That's all I'll be say, said about him. And the same, I think, can be said about pretty much everybody here. Um, Lucius Fox, you know, helping out with Batman more. He knows Bruce Wayne's Batman. In Batman Begins, it was alluded to. He kind of knew. Like, either he knew or he didn't know. It was sort of alluded to that he did, but not confirmed. Here, it's obviously confirmed, and he's helping him more. And they do something with the bat suit. And that, not do something, but they make Batman be able to turn his head. He doesn't have to do this or that. If he wants to see, he can just move his head. Um, Christopher Nolan said he, they try to find ways to do this and try to give a good explanation that people would accept. But that well, the simplest is the best the option. Is he wants to move his head. The end. Because... Even in Batman Begins, they kind of wanted to show him do that, but they're like, well, in the first movie, we can't just do that. If we do a sequel, maybe we'll find a way. And they did. Also, we see the tumbler, tumbler blow up, and we see the Bat Pod, the motorcycle, called the Bat Pod because it's an escape pod. Ha ha ha. There are some people who have not, who haven't, um, who have not, haven't caught on to that as to why it's the bat pod but it's an escape pod and um you know that was that was really cool that sequence in the film where after he's protecting Harvey Dent from the Joker it gets a rocket launcher to the tumbler it, it, as it's gonna sacrifice as they say it sacrifices itself in a way and blows up but it's allowed to stay alive with the bat pod as uh, Batman ejects and <laughs> continues to go after the Joker. And, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, Michael Caine is offered. He's fantastic. He's great. He's incredible. Michael Caine is always amazing, but, you know, he, the dynamic he and Bruce Wayne have Christian Bale their chemistry in each movie just is so <clears throat> it's so great I love it I mean it's just uh, what did you say you know what can you really say uh, about it I mean he's just it's it's great it's the best I think in it's the best chemistry you could ever ask for, for uh, Bruce Wayne and Alfred Pennyworth <laughs> Michael Caine's performance and charm seeps through in each installment and he he's Alfred no matter what he is Alfred just as if just like Gary Oldman is the definitive uh, he is the definitive uh, Commissioner Gordon he's Jim Gordon Morgan Freeman is Lucius Fox the end I know this this series was like the first incarnation people ever were introduced to the character because he was introduced later in the comics um, to help Batman with getting gadgets and stuff uh, if we're working in Wayne Enterprises and uh, because of these films he's been included in more media or Batman media. <clears throat> Various like games and TV shows and stuff. So yeah, Morgan Freeman's performance and the characterization of Lucius Fox really made that character. Um, and finally, Batman, Bruce Wayne, Christian Bale. He's fantastic. He's amazing. He's just great. Um, you know, it's. His Bruce Wayne is so, you know, you, you feel in each movie that this is the man, this is a man who, you know, he feels, who has, is tortured inside and feels he has to right the wrongs of Gotham by defending them and doing what he can so, so that what happened to him 
as a kid won't happen to anyone else. And with this film, you know, culminating the loss of Rachel, you see how he's just so broken up. Like the the the, the woman who was gonna be there for me. And this could also tie you with Harvey Dent. Um, you know, Harvey Dent. You know, great. He starts out good, having a good cause with it because of the Joker, uh, due to the death of Rachel. There's an explosion, there's oil drums, he has gasoline on one side of his face as in the building he was in blows up as he's being taken out by Batman. He blows up, fire hits his face, and he becomes Two-Face, you know, and there's a coin, that uh, two-headed coin, he flips good luck. He, uh... You know, that's, uh, you know, burned, so heads or tails. And, uh, yeah. Again, the Joker creates Harvey Dent. And, you know, and back to Bruce Wayne, you know, the interactions with Harvey and Bruce and Batman and Harvey, later Two Face. You know, they're just incredible as well. Oof. Just as incredible and amazing as the intimidation. The interrogation scene. That, uh... You know... That goes on between Batman and the Joker. Uh, you know, he think Harvey Dent thinks he's just some rich snob. And then, at some point in the movie, is this, when everyone's at uh, a penthouse, Bruce Wayne's, you know, Bruce Wayne kind of reveals who he really is, about how Harvey Dent, you know, he believes in Harvey Dent and how he can be, really change the city, you know. Again, Christian Bale shows off the three personas of Batman. <laughs> Or Bruce Wayne, you know, Batman, obviously. The persona, the Playboy persona, where he's such a, like, seen as a rich snob and jerk. And the private one, who's, who cares about people. He, he cares about so many people, uh, but he can only do so much. And that's what pains him, pains Batman. Or even if he admits it or not, he, he knows he can't do, he can't save everybody. He can't be a person who's going to be the sole savior of the city. You know, other people have to step up as well, but so many people won't because they're scared. Or maybe they just don't seem to have a lot of options, at least in their eyes, to help. And, um... You know, Bale's performance in each film just of this trilogy just encapsulates me. You know, I was just at, I was more intrigued with his Batman, Bruce Wayne, than the Joker. I mean, I love the Joker, but I don't know, there's just, I guess it's the way Bale plays Batman and Bruce Wayne. He gets the character. He gets Bruce Wayne. He gets why he's Batman. He gets why he wants to possibly or is hopeful that the city will no, no longer need Batman one day. You know, he, he knows that. You know, he he's aware. And, um, his performance shines. Um, I've talked about all these characters. Uh, I've mentioned how, you know, it took place a year after Batman Begins, which some people have a problem with. Um, but, you know, it's like, oh, he's only Batman for a year? Oh, that's stupid. Well, obviously at the very end, he, he takes the blame for everything that Harvey Dent did of killing people. Some of them being cops. Um, and, uh, just how, you know, Batman uh, also killed Harvey Dent. He killed Two-Face. 
accidentally that you know he was gonna he had his gun on uh, uh, Jim Gordon's son and he couldn't allow Harvey Dent to kill him Harvey Dent shoots Batman um, as Dent is you know distracted he then goes in and tackles Dent off of a ledge in the building and then you know, his neck is broken, and um, Batman hangs on, gives Gordon his son, and then he falls and hurts himself. Tells him that uh, he's whatever Gotham needs him to be, and um, how he he just uh, he's you know. He, he, he really, uh, uh, he'll be anything. He'll be the villain. He'll be the martyr. He'll be the one that everybody blames and hates, even though it's a lie. He'll let people believe that lie. He's like, you know, I don't like this, but, you know, whatever. People need to have hope. People need to believe in Harvey Dent, because if they don't, everything he did that was good will be completely undone when, when it, they find out no, Harvey Dent wasn't a great guy. What he did was, you know, he killed a bunch of people and put put a gun to my son's head and was about to kill him, uh, possibly, or very likely. But Batman, you know, takes all that on him, all of that burden, puts it on his shoulders, and he's like, okay, fine. It sucks, but, you know, this has to happen. And, um, you know, Bruce, uh, Batman then drives off being chased by the police and dogs being let, being, um, <clears throat> let loose on him. And, uh, he drives away. He goes in, the film ends with a cross between... Alfred burning a letter Rachel wrote, you know, to Bruce, which said that he, that she will be there for him, but only as a friend, and she's marrying Harvey Dent. Um, uh, and, you know, earlier Alfred was going to give it to Bruce, but he saw that at that point he couldn't handle something like that. He was so distraught over her death and how the Joker almost killed Harvey Dent and how he was supposed to save and be supposed to inspire people, inspire good into people, save as many people as he can, and he failed. And he can't, he just doesn't see what's the point of going on now. But Alfred's like, you have to keep going, you have to be the outcast, which he said earlier, but basically that he's trying to reiterate all this to Bruce Wayne. He's like, you can't give up. You have to keep going. I know it's hard, but you just have to. And from there on, uh, you know, he... Uh, you know, he just took the letter because he's like, at this point, Bruce does not need to read that. He doesn't need to read that letter because it's just going to crush him at the moment, so he burns it. And also, as Batman's driving away, we see Gordon give a eulogy to, about Harvey Dent and how great he was and how there will never be, you know, basically, somebody will never, there will never be another Harvey Dent, somebody as good as him, who cares for the city and the people. Just won't happen. Uh, and the film ends like that. It's on a down note, and or a, yeah, uh, a downer ending. And Gordon also breaks the uh, <clears throat> the bat signal. The bat signal is gone. And uh, 
And that's really it in terms of plot and characters and all that stuff I've got, honestly. The other thing is awards. Numerous awards. Somebody, you know, Heath Ledger was honored a lot. And he got a bunch of awards. You've got every single major award you could ever want in the film industry, including the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. I've said this before on some of the other Oscar kind of stuff and other award shows. And I will repeat this now. Didn't get nominated for Best Picture or Director. Many people were angry and upset over that. And other awards should have been nominated. I've often said Batman or Christian Bale deserved an Academy Award nomination for Batman Bruce Wayne in this film. I think in all of the films, honestly. Um, but uh, I think he should have been nominated and even win. Um, I know people liked Milk, people liked Sean Penn's performance, and that's all fine. I just think Bale did a superior job, in my opinion, um, deserving of a nomination at the very least. Even if he didn't win, he deserved the recognition. But I guess because so much was said about Heath Ledger's performance and so much praise went to there, he became the sole winner in the acting category of this trilogy. Or in any acting category, for that matter, honestly. Um, some reviewer had actually said, you know, everybody could, would be a supporter. There's no lead. No lead at all. Can't have a lead in The Dark Knight. Well, the film's called The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is the arguably the most famous uh, nickname Batman has ever been given in the history of comics, the history of Batman himself. It's the most common nickname outside of the Caved Crusader. You know, but... Batman is the Dark Knight, and Christian Bale plays Batman, so he plays the title role. Therefore, he's the best actor. He's the leading actor man in the film I thought it was kind of dumb when I heard that critic say that like um yeah you're dumb uh, but yeah whatever you can have your opinion whatever it's fine but the, the film should have been nominated for best picture and director and I believe Nolan deserved both of those Oscars he should have been not just nominated but have won both of them it, it, it's so, like, well, it's because it's a comic book film. It's a superhero film. That's why it could, didn't get nominated for them. they like, we can't nominate this this movie. It doesn't matter that it's the biggest film of the entire year. It's the movie most people loved. We can't honor it even with a nomination for Best Picture, for Best Director, the top, the only supporting actor. And I believe the film won, like, best... What was the other Oscar it won? <sighs> best sound editing. Uh, you know, a technical Oscar. The other nominations, art direction, cinematography, best sound mixing, visual effects, makeup, and editing. One major award and one uh, technical award. Comic book films are taking a lot more seriously, and it's thanks to films like The Dark, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Trilogy. This trilogy helped make people see comic book films as serious films. They're not just silly, goofy things for entertainment. They're not, they can actually be very serious movies, but no, people, uh, it, it, award shows don't want that. They don't want to acknowledge that. Um, the Critics' Choice Awards, though, they honored it for Best Action Film of the Year. And Nolan, I believe, uh, he got nominated for Best Director. Bale won Best uh, Action, Best Actor in an Action Film. Uh, uh, best Ensemble. Or so, but yeah. It didn't win Director Best Picture, but action movie yeah 
it's just it's sad it's sad but did my now acting on ensemble actually I don't remember what which which award was it that won like action movie and all that uh, so what where is this Oh, is it the People's Choice Awards? Oh, okay, it was the People's Choice Awards. Never mind, no. Yeah, favorite superhero. Favorite leading man, male action starter. Bale was nominated, but lost. Um, but he won best uh, superhero, or favorite superhero, favorite on-screen matchup with Heath Ledger. And he won uh, favorite cast. So, one, two, three, four, five. Five, one, two, yeah, five of those awards, he won three. So, hey, I, the people thought, you know, Christian Bale was one of the best uh, uh, heroes and actors of the year. Academy and other awards thought, nope, not good enough. <sighs> Award shows are. You know, it's things like that, that like The Dark Knight not being considered for Best Picture or Director. You know, even if it didn't win, the fact that it wasn't even nominated just shows how it's a joke. The Oscars and other award shows are a joke. People don't take them seriously. And, and the whole Best uh, Favorite Film category. I was going to make a separate video, but I'm going to think this is a good thing to <laughs> mention this. It's been postponed for like a year because apparently they need to the Academy needs to truly uh, draw out the rules or qualifications for this and uh, so it's explained more because it's like you think what's best popular film first off that's stupid that's a dumb name should be most popular film but because it's the Academy everything's the best it's not most it's best so you can't have one category called most popular film. Doesn't matter that that would make more sense of a title, but whatever. Gotta be consistent, I guess, if it makes no sense or sounds stupid. Even though people think the category itself is stupid. Um, but, you know, but, but best popular film. Uh, what's that entail? What makes the most money? Well, if that's the case, then Dark Knight would have been a shoo-in for that category. Uh, Dark Knight Rises also. Uh, other comic book films or science fiction films, whatever. Films like that would have been, have a better chance of winning such an award. Because I guess best picture and director and things like that, that's too good for superhero films, too good for science fiction films. It's just too good. We can't even acknowledge those movies for peasants or something. That's how the Academy looks at it. It's like, you know, <sighs> while I and others think that The Dark Knight deserved to win Best Picture and Director and all that stuff, and be considered for other nominations. Like in my opinion, I think Bale deserved a nomination. At the very, very least, I think he deserved to have won. But at the very least, a nomination is what he deserved. But no. He played a comic book uh, hero. He played a superhero. Uh, and he didn't get as much praise as Heath Ledger. Um, also, again, uh, Heath Ledger's death most likely had a huge influence. Actually, I'm pretty sure it did. Um, because if you look at that performance and then some of the other performances nominated, um, there's really nothing exactly to say would have won if he was alive. Um, I guess you could compare his Joker to Anthony Hopkins' performance in The Silence of the Lambs as Hannibal Lecter, but... Hannibal Lecter had a level of sophistication to him. The Joker didn't. I know I've said this before, but again, still, it's like, you know, it, it's true. It's an unfortunate truth that people don't like to acknowledge. 
if Heath Ledger was alive, the chances of him winning an Academy Award for being the Joker would have been reduced. It would have not have been as big since, uh, since he died, and, I, and I, he deserved it no matter what. He deserved to have won. But he, uh, unfortunately, because of his passing away, that kind of influenced uh, not just the Oscar voters, but so many voters of all these other major award shows that influenced them. Got to give it to Heath Ledger. They have to give it to him because he's passed away. He, he, you know, would you have said he deserves it uh, if he didn't? I don't believe they did. People like me and you, we think he gave a stellar performance no matter what, deserving of every award he was nominated for. It didn't matter if he died or not. He deserved it. He deserved the praise. He deserved the accolades that come after that. But, you know, award show people, now it seems like they want to award Awards to those who either passed away or who are really old and might not ever get a chance to ever win such an award like an Oscar. With Heath Ledger, he passed away and would never probably get the chance to get nominated again. Uh, he deserved his Oscar, but, you know, again, if he lived, he probably wouldn't have gotten it. so annoying and so infuriating that these award shows can't give awards to the films people think are the best. And obviously it's the Academy. They don't need to do anything. This is... But things like that are why people don't watch the Oscars anymore. People think they're a joke. Because the films that are the best, uh, most of them, they never get nominated, but if they do, the chances of them winning uh, are extremely low. Um, uh, unless by some miracle they win, which doesn't seem to happen anymore. Uh, I can't think of a film within the last 10 years uh, that deserved to have been nominated for an Academy Award and either wasn't or it got robbed and it went to something else or some other film I mean Christian Bale won an Oscar for the fighter I was amazed by that I'm like someone who deserved an Academy Award won granted that was two years after this film but I mean he deserved it and he won I mean I mean Heath Ledger deserved it for his for this film but and I've already illustrated that uh, main reason why he won for this film. <sighs> Very rarely do people who deserve Oscars and other awards get those awards. They're often overlooked, or they gave a great performance, or they made a great film, but there's just something that prevents them winning. And they may win later on in life, either as they're very old, or they passed away, but they gave one last phenomenal performance or made one last film that came out after their passing, or they were alive, then they passed away, and then they got nominated for a bunch of stuff, and then they win. And they're not there to collect it, like their family members have to, or someone close to the family, if for one reason or another, the family, some family member can't go there. Um, and it's just sad, I mean... Christopher Nolan, will he ever win an Academy Award? Finally was nominated for Dunkirk for Best Director and with Best uh, Picture as well. But she was previously nominated for Inception, which that film got him nominated for uh, Best uh, Screenplay, which was a category he got nominated uh, for Memento. Will he ever win Best Director, Best Picture? I think he will one day. Um, I think Christopher Nolan makes stellar films. He makes phenomenal films. He makes great films, films that are 
very likely to be seen uh, but like uh, a lot of people's top 10 films of the year or whatever it's just what uh, will he you know uh, so with that said I don't think he'll make a film where he didn't deserve it uh, best director and or best picture win but he does de definitely deserved such an award before deserved it for this film I could argue even for The Dark Knight Rises. Um, there's a lot of good qualities in that film that could be considered worthy. Uh, but I'll talk about that next time. Um, deserted for Inception and Dunkirk. And even argue that Memento was deserving of screenplay. But, you know, there's various Oscars. No one deserved it for. I have faith he'll win one day, but the Academy are also full of themselves in a bunch of buttheads. I mean, George Lucas didn't win for Star Wars, but he should have lost those to Annie Hall. Alfred Hitchcock never won an Academy Award. Um, Peter O'Toole never won an Academy Award. All he got was a competitive or an honorary Oscar. Oh, Pacino won Best Actor, but it was after, you know, multiple uh, robberies or snubs. Um, it was in compensation for him not receiving it already, and he's like, oh, here you go, you got it. Here's basically an honorary Oscar, but it's a competitive field, so you have a legit Oscar. You're a real Oscar winner. It's not some honorary thing that, like, George Lucas won. Irving G. Falberg Award, uh, which is like the highest achievement a producer could get. You know, he got that. Spielberg got that. Uh, Clint Eastwood got that. Alfred Hitchcock did. It's like so many people, so many great filmmakers are overlooked. I feel uh, for a good while, Nolan will be overlooked. I do have faith he'll win. But just it just depends on what movie that he'll make that the Academy will think is deserving of a top prize to him. Well, I've gone on long enough about this film. Kind of went on a tangent, but that's it about the awards and how stupid they are of not acknowledging certain movies because of the genre they're in and or delaying the win of some people. You know, they might win because they deserve it, but they're all overlooked. Like, also, Oldman deserved it for Darkest Hour, in my opinion, but he deserved it in many more movies. Deserved many more Oscars, but... I guess when one, when people are talented, we can't give the, a, them an, uh, an award until later in life. Until either it's too late, and they've passed away, and they can't collect it, or for another movie they did that isn't as good possibly as some other movie they did prior. <sighs> anyway, that's all I have to say about The Dark Knight. If you've watched it to the end, thank you. And, uh, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed me talking for over an hour. And until next time, uh, have a good day and have a good week.